Hello, one and all. Today we're going to be talking about a horror book. Welcome back to my channel through the pages with D. Today we are going to talk about a horror book that I have just finished as a buddy read with my lovely friend and author Ida, known as I.K. Stockbake. She has this book out that is indie published called The Artificial Structure, formerly known as The Moon. So go and check her book out. But together we read Grady Hendrix how to sell a haunted house hence the look i am sporting i have got my punk hat on with the goggles steampunk do we like what do we think i thought it was rather fitting for the occasion so i donned the hat so grade hendrix how to sell a haunted house interesting different dynamic for a horror than i've read before I actually really enjoyed this. Now, the story itself pertained very much to the dynamics within a family. So rather than it just being a straight outright horror, it gave you an awful lot of insight into this family and their trauma and their struggles that they'd been through together. However, with a twist, and there's always a twist in horror. There's always a different element that is meant to scare or spook. Grady Hendrix doesn't seem to really be that author within this book. There's a lot of comedy, quite a lot of humorous parts to this book where me, myself and Ida were talking back and forth about the things that were making us laugh. <clears throat> and there was quite a few things to actually laugh about. But the main character within this story is a lady called Louise. And she finds out that she's pregnant and she's not with the dad so she's scared to tell mum and dad that she's pregnant for fear of repercussions however they take it very well her mum nancy takes it actually really very well but the tragic event is that mum and dad five years later are involved in what is a car accident and pass away so it's then left to louise and mark and mark's louise's brother her younger brother to sort out the funeral arrangements and deal with the house hence how to sell a haunted house so as i'm sure you can guess by the title and where i've got so far with the goings on that louise and mark are going to deal with mum and dad's house and the goings on within this house without giving too much away about this story nancy has a very strange past a past where sadly she lost her brother freddie at five, he was only five years old when he passed, it was an accident. Um, but the way the family dynamic is, is they don't speak about past traumas. They, gla they glaze over them. They don't really talk about them as a family. It's happened, we move on, however, we don't really speak about it. We don't really cover that subject again. So this in itself creates problems for Louise and Mark to just actually find the truth in things. But the one thing that I will say for Grady Hendrix, what he's done within this book, is he's created this very dynamic, very inspiring story of a family that leads you along their journey. Yes, there's horror elements, but you are led in this journey of this dynamic and how are they going to repair? Because Louise and Mark, essentially don't speak they are brother and sister and they were somewhat close when they were younger but in adult life they've drifted apart and they don't really speak so he is taking you on this this journey with louise and mark as to are they going to repair their relationship are they going to become brother and sister properly again and what i will say is that through everything that they face and they face a lot they go through a hell of a time the way Grady Hendrix writes the dynamics of their relationship and how it goes through its arcs and its curves and its twists he does it beautifully he does a very very good job of it myself and Ida we were talking about this and we were that's predominantly what we focused on was the theme of family and the different 
breakdowns of communication within the family and how nobody's actually seeming to, to deal with any of the trauma. Obviously, because it's a horror, there's some quirky parts in there. There's some quirky characters that you meet. One, for instance, is called Barb. She was actually one of my favourite characters within this story. Um, I won't get into who or what she does because then the story will be a giveaway. But it's definitely unique and there's definitely a very interesting character called Pupkin. And I can't give too much away about who he is. But he's the he's the um, antagonist within this story and it's done very well for what it is it's done well there are very very laugh out loud moments very because of the because of what the antagonist is it does bring a humor element to the story but it doesn't like you would think necessarily spoil it it isn't necessarily isn't necessarily preyed on too much what he is it could have been and it could have been made very stupidly. It could have come across as a slightly idiotic story. Um, something that we've read a million times, something that we've watched a million times, and it's like, oh, that old hat again, um, and this old hat. But it could have come across that way, and it doesn't. It's, I think Ida enjoyed it for it being a genre that she's not very used to reading. It seemed like she enjoyed it more so because of the the themes within the family you know the fallout of brother and sister and can they repair that the hidden trauma by the families <clears throat> and are they prepared to speak up and speak the truth though all those little elements and certain tropes do actually bring out a different version of a horror a horror with an actual underlying story to it which is a horror i actually really like i like it when a horror has an underlying story to tell when it's not just always gore or satanic worship or you know think things along those lines i do like an actual storyline so that's what this book gives it's very good the character arcs are fantastic louise's arc in itself is amazing um she has a daughter called poppy who herself is five um poppy goes through some things louise <laughs> has to um, protect her daughter through this story towards the end of it her, her daughter is then is one who suffers so Louise has to step up as a mum so there's that trope of the protective mum and um, you know the, the fight or flight situation as a mum and will she, will she protect her daughter which she does it's just it's definitely well worth a read I wasn't sure the minute we went into the sort of certain areas within the book, I, I had that instant feeling of, oh, here we go, we're going to get silly now. And it did a little bit in little ways, but humorous, funny, funny silly. It's actually a very, very entertaining read because, as I say, of the underlying story that's in there. Even though I'm calling it underlying, it's very, very prevalent to the story. It's very, very pronounced. It's the majority of what the book is about, is this family situation and can certain things be resolved? Can certain secrets come out and can the family gain some sort of solace together again? That is very prevalent in the story and it is very, very good. It's more like the actual elements of horror are a sidestep to the family story. So if you like a story in horror genre that is milder on the scares, that is milder on the, say, um, gruesome elements. There are some gruesome elements and they are explained well, but they're not of saw-type capacity. We're not talking that level of gruesome. There is some gruesomeness to this, but it's not the, the kind which is going to make you necessarily not want to carry on reading. So if you if you like any of those, but if you are after a horror, horror sorry, that actually has an element of a story to it and it's not just axes and you know uh, killing people and slashing and it's not all that you actually want something with a story to it i absolutely would recommend grady hendrix how to sell a haunted house i thoroughly enjoyed it and if i was going to give it any hats because this is where we're at because i like my hats and i asked what should i do instead of stars we're going to do hats so i rate this book four hats it's not quite a five absolutely not a five because as i say some elements of the antagonist are a little bit silly 
but even though they're silly, they add a sense of humour. There is a sense of humour to this story and I kind of get the impression that that's Grady Hendrick's thing, is to add humour into his horror. And he does it well. He doesn't do it so that it detects, it distracts away from the horror. He does that in a very in a very good way. He's very clever as an author to do that. So yes, I give Grady Hendrix How to Sell a Haunted House four hats. So, if that sounds appealing to you, pick it up. It's definitely worth a read. It won't take you very long. It's not it's not a very big book. And yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope if you pick it up, you enjoy it too. Um, if you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Um, if you know people who enjoy book reviews, please share this video. I'd love for you to do that. And if you've watched a couple of times and you've returned and you haven't subscribed as yet, why don't you subscribe? I mean, that way you can click on the bell and you can be notified that any time I post a video and that way you don't miss any content and you're not searching for me. It will pop up and let you know whenever I post. <clears throat> I also have to say a huge great big thank you. I am so close to 90 subscribers. This is amazing. I never thought I would get to this point. As I often say, you imagine yourself in a room full of that many people and that's quite a lot of people to talk to at one time. So that's amazing. Thank you all so, so much. I really, really do appreciate that. It's so amazing. Never thought I'd be getting to those numbers at all. Again, as usual, I always like to thank everybody on Booktube who has been very supportive to me and a friend and somebody who I can reach out and speak to. Also, I need to also thank Eva um, from She Was Only Eva. She is a little shining beacon in the world of Booktube. She sent me a book, Pulling the Wings Off Angels by KJ Parker. I could have spoke about that today in this video, but I kind of wanted this one to just be for Grady Hendrix and do a separate one for KJ Parker because he is slowly but surely KJ Parker becoming one of my favourite authors. I read The Devil You Know by KJ Parker and I have now read Pulling the Wings Off Angels and I'm going to review that by itself. But I just want to say thank you again so much, Eva. Your generosity knows no bounds and you're a friend and I love you to bits and thank you. Thank you so much. And other than that, as I say, if we've done the clicky things and we've subscribed and we've pressed the bell, so we now know every time I'm going to post a video, the next time I will be here will be Monday now. So, because it's Friday, get yourself a hat on. Any kind of hat, just a funky hat. Get yourself a hat on. Go out into the world and make a statement. And always remember, be kind, be considerate, and if you have the chance, help somebody out. And always ask those around you if they're okay. Always reach out. Okay? Well, have a great weekend, guys. I love you all. Thank you so much for your continued support. And until next time, I've been Dee, and this is my steampunk funky hat, and I will see you guys through the pages. Bye-bye.